What's up, guys? This is Zach and Johnny. We're going to be racing on Forza Motorsport 6. We're going to use the Lancer Evo versus the WRX. So I'm going with the older Lancer. I'm going to be a lot slower, I think, but we'll see. All right. You ready, John? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's using an R852. I'm in an S783. A little bit slower. Um, I've never used this car, though. My handling is a little bit better, it looks like. I've never used the uh, WR WRX. Your acceleration is going to kill me, it looks like. I don't know. I'm used to using, like, the track cars. Yeah, I hate both these cars. I think next video we'll go with, like, LMS cars or track cars. Go with, like, a DBR9, maybe, versus a Lamborghini. <laughs> I, I mean, know. the Nuremberg is a great track. It's meant for track cars. Oh, definitely. Um, it's good. Sports cars, crazy cars. You know, it's not meant for a Subaru WRX and a stupid Lancer. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the Lancers and WRXs. I think this track is just way too big for them. I mean, you're when you're racing 16 miles, you kind of... I don't know. I mean, it just takes a while with these cars. Alright, never even used this, so it's kind of a new experience. It's a little bit wide on the turning. Yeah, so is mine. Is it? Yeah. I uh, tuned my car to have a little bit of downforce in the front and rear. Maybe give it a little bit better steering around the corners. Oh, that was close. Anybody that plays Forza, when I first started, I used to use automatic. you got to use manual. I yeah. mean, I usually use manual with clutch. I didn't use it this game. But I, that's hard. I've never really tried it. Is it fun? Yeah, it's good with the clutch. A lot of people I meet on here, they all use automatic, and it's just like you're losing so much time on your racing because you could downshift and just slow down the car. And then you have a wider power band, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I could downshift, and even if I downshift and I'm at 6,000 RPMs, it's just better than, you know, starting off in a higher gear. Manuals, you could race um, a Koenigsegg 1-to-1 one -one in this game and beat it with a Corvette just because you use manual and the other person's using automatic. Yeah. It really plays a big deal with this game. Whoa, that steering was wide there. Up, oh, coming up to. The I'm touch. used to, I'm used to using those track cars. Not really used to turning this slow. Yeah, I'm not really <clears throat> a fan of these cars. I don't like these kind of cars. I think they're all overrated. They're not, they're really not even good. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of them. I'll t I'll stay with my BMW. I mean, I just don't see, like, Subaru is more, I don't really, I'm not saying I have a problem with them, but I personally wouldn't get one. I mean, let's look at the 2015 WRX STI, for example, or even the 16. I mean, if you're spending 40 grand on a car, you're, you'd be a lot better just going with, like, a used 335i and putting, like, a crank and single turbo on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, you're using a four. It's it's more or less a big hype. The WRX, the Lancer Evo, it's more or less a hype of the four cylinder, like the cheap four cylinders. Yeah. I like me yeah, personally. You can't put so much power out of a four cylinder. So yeah. It's big. Yeah, and like me personally, I like big engines. I like hearing the rumble. You know, when you're in a Subaru WRX, it's the sound is different than if you're in a big V8 like an M3 or something. Yeah. I mean, you could get a used M3 for the same price as a new Lancer. I mean, it's going to be used, but at the same time, you're rocking a big V8. You're using the handling of a BMW, and you just made me wreck. I don't know. Everybody has their different opinions, but I'll tell you, if you spend forty grand on WRX, you know, and then Sally Sue spends forty grand. well actually, probably twenty three grand maybe on a 335i with you know decent relative miles and then she spends the extra money that would equivalent to 40 grand to put a single turbo in there and then she's rocking 600 horsepower and she's going to destroy anybody you know yeah the thing with the two bmw and subaru 
is if you're getting a car to go race and go crazy, I personally would not trust my life in a Subaru when I would with a BMW because they're they're just they're they're born and made to be on the track and perform and handle. Well, yeah, I mean it's the ultimate driving machine. I mean, when I got, I was looking, when I was looking at my BMW, a lot of people told me, oh, get an Evo, get an Evo. It's like, I just don't, I'm not a fan of four-cylinder cars. Yeah. And they're all the same. I mean, everybody, you know, there's differences, okay, but in the general sense, an Evolution, a WRX STI, uh, what are the other four-cylinder cars? That, you know, it's just all the same thing. And really, I don't. The FRS, like, not to go off topic, but talking Subaru, the BRZ, FRS, Scion, yeah. both the same thing. I just don't think, I think that when that car first came out, everybody seen it as being a really fast, sporty car. And I beat that thing in my Jeep Wrangler. It's not, yeah. uh-huh. you know, like years ago when I seen that thing, I'm like, oh, that's sweet. The Scion FRS or the Subaru BRZ, I really, before I seen the specs, I respected Subaru more. I'm like, that car looks good. It's going to be fast. You know, I figured, you know, it would go along with the Camaro and the Mustang. I figured, oh, yeah, it's the same price as the Camaro, same price as the Mustang. It'll have a six-cylinder or maybe a turbo four. But it's naturally aspirated. I mean, I don't, I'm not a fan of Chevrolet at all. But for the same price, you might as well just get a Camaro. You're going to have a six-cylinder. It's going to sound better if you straight pipe or something than a that four. The FRS and the BRC, I think, would be a lot faster if they would have just did, like, a three, like, just like a three-liter, a little bit over maybe, like, inline six. Yeah. Even with a turbo, like, just a regular inline six, I think, would still be a lot faster. Oh, I know it would be a lot faster. But even if they want to stick with the four-cylinder... All their engines usually are around the same. I mean, all they got to do is put a WRX engine into it. I know they are now, but this is years later. Now they're making the BRZ STI, I think, or something like that. Yeah. But that should have been done a long time ago. Even if they were going to just make the naturally aspirated four-cylinder, I think they should have released, like, the sidekick. I mean, you look at the Jenny Coupe. You have the Jenny Coupe, and then you have the Jenny Coupe R-Spec, and, you know, the, the racetrack one. You have two of the same ones and then you have the mustang the mustang gt the camaro and the camaro ss so why isn't it the brz and the sti both come out at the same time mm-hmm. it's not that they don't have the technology to do it i mean they're using the same engines pretty much yeah definitely <clears throat> i don't know what do you guys think you could leave us a comment about what you would buy for what 40 grand 30 grand maybe you could honestly, you could really, if you know cars and look around a lot, you could get a lot of cool stuff within forty grand. Oh yeah, definitely. Leave us a comment down below. What would you buy for twenty five thousand dollars? It's twenty five grand. You could get a used WRX, decent, you know, whatever. You could get an Evo, decent, whatever. You could get a three thirty five. What would you buy for twenty five thousand dollars? Now, there's going to be some limitations to this. It's got to be an everyday car. I mean, for twenty-five grand, you could easily get like a nice Porsche Cayman, but you're not going to want to drive that in the winter. If you live in Florida, you could have that as an everyday car. I mean, Porsches—they're bulletproof. I mean, you could drive a Porsche till two hundred thousand miles probably, as long as you maintain it. You can still get a lot though within forty grand. I mean. If you even look, probably a little bit more than 25, you could get like an older used like M6 or something and you're rocking it. Oh yeah, and then you're rocking a 10 cylinder. I just don't like the way everything's going with these gasoline cars. I mean, this is a big entry away to what we're talking about. Everybody's switching to small engines. I know gas, save gas, save the planet, you know, go eco, eco-friendly, whatever. You can do that. You could go eco-friendly on your mom's, you know, sedan, or go eco-friendly on your mom's uh, SUV, you know, go eco-friendly on your dad's truck, whatever. But when you're talking sports cars, there shouldn't be an eco-friendly sports car. It should just be all about power. I mean, for instance, me, my BMW, I don't care what the gas mileage is. I just, I go put the gas in it, be done. 
You know, I could drive it and probably get 25 miles to a gallon, but I don't care. You know, I'm buying a car that I'm buying a car that I don't really care about the gas. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like I'm buying this car. I know the price of gas. I know that it takes 91. I know this stuff, but it doesn't bother me. Gas is cheap right now. I mean, I could fill up my BMW for 60 bucks. And that's 93. I also hate, too, that everything new, whether it doesn't matter what company, all these new cars are all switching, like you said, to the small engines. And if you look at the new, um, and even the new 3 Series, it's it's just a four-cylinder. Yeah. And if you look at, if you get, like, you could get an older 3 Series, and it's an inline six. Yeah, and I mean, here's the thing about it. I, okay, yeah, the new 3 Series, it's turbo four. It's a little bit faster, not by much. But then you don't have the bulletproof reliability of an inline engine. You have turbos to worry about. If one of those turbos goes, there's a lot of money and maintenance and repair there. You know, it's it's going to be a lot more. There's so many computers. Like a BMW has a million computers on it already. So adding turbos, you're going to have more computers and more electronics. And I just think that it's just going to be a more of an expensive car to maintain. And like I said, then you don't have the engine noise as... A bigger engine car you don't have that rumble my car i love the rumble of it but you know you get a new three series and you're not going to have that it'll sound mean but you're not going to have like an all-out mad sound you're not going to sound like a lamborghini i mean my car i i have a normal three series sedan you know it's not a sports car none of that but it's fast enough for me i'm looking to get a new one but it's it's good. I mean, for the price, I could have yeah. got I could have got you know a new Miata, or something like that, but I didn't. I went with this because I know the reliability. I know everything about the car. Yeah, and you can't really get anything too much more crazy for the price range. Yeah, and like, yeah, you get a Mustang, Camaro, whatever. But I mean, it's just I don't think it's worth it. You're not going to be able to. Like a, a big thing with these cars is you're not going to be able to trust your life in a Mustang, and I most certainly wouldn't. Yeah. All right. Well, that's about it for this video today. As you guys seen, the WRX beat me. Um, handled pretty well. How did yours handle? Uh, my ha- mine handled actually better than I thought. It was. A, yeah, I didn't yeah. fly off the road much, but I was being careful. Uh, yeah. Definitely didn't have the speed and turning of any of the other cars that I usually race, but it was okay. I, it was much more than I thought. Yep. Um, But yeah, we'll be back next video and we're going to switch it up a little bit. Later.